Hi, I'm James Rostance, and welcome to the 414 Extra. So this is the part where we get to dive a little bit deeper into the content we've already covered in the main show. And I'd like to start just, just by asking, could you explain a little bit more about the hurdles that can get in the way of delivering the types of campaigns that you like to champion? Yeah, I think, I think one interesting issue is the burden of proof. And both for um, clients and for agencies, more and more were asked to prove that an idea works. And actually, if you, if you think about the way that most people um, interact with campaigns, especially when it comes to um, uh, content and uh, above the line um, pieces, a lot of people share those on dark posts. So they'll, they'll take a picture of a billboard, they'll take a picture of, or, or they'll share a video on, on WhatsApp, a, a group of friends, and they'll all discuss that. That's something that, that we're never ever going to be able to, to analyze because obviously it's all, it's all dark, it's all, it's all in, in, it's the, the modern equivalent of a, a talk in a pub. Um, and so asking people to prove brand new, fresh ideas that people have never seen before um, is it, kind of impossible. So there's a real balance between you know, getting the strategy right, getting feedback, but not, n not being so tied down by it that you don't actually do anything in the end. And I think that's going to be something that gets worse and worse and worse um, as people interact with campaigns in different ways. So is this uh, about then having trust in your creative director or agency to... Ultimately, ultimately yes. And, and you know, that's something that it, it, if you're looking at the kind of client agency relationship, that, that's something that both people need to work on, to work on that trust. It's not just on, um, on clients to, to trust their agencies more. You know, you need to earn that trust. You know, trust is earned. Um, but yeah, at, at some point, you, if you believe in the idea and you're excited about it in the first place, there's some, you, know, you're gonna, you, have, you need to collectively take that leap of faith, faith together. Um, and, and, and trying to prove it often just strips the strips the, the kind of essence away from the idea. And when you do that, that's when you get ideas that aren't brave and ideas that really no one cares about because they're just, they're just lowest common denominator and, and that's, not, that's, that's never been exciting. Well, could taking a, a brave approach ever work for larger brands? And if so, what sort of a approach should they take? Well, I, the, the answer is yes, in one word. Yeah. <laughs> I think it can work. Um, but I, I, I would push it a little bit further. I think it's something that, that they have to do more of. Um, rather than just something that, that could be one of the things that they employ. I think they all need to be a bit braver. I think a good example um, is, the, <clears throat> is the beer industry. Uh, so the beer industry um, has, is being um, kind of eroded by, by craft beer coming in and being a lot sexier, a lot more exciting, a lot more brave. Um, and bigger beer brands, I think there's a good example of Budweiser in, in the US um, losing their top three spot um, a couple of months ago. Um, and that's partly because they're just trying to appeal to everyone and, and what, does it, what does it say about you when you walk into a bar and say I'll have a bud? It, it doesn't really say anything because it's just so ubiquitous. Whereas if you walk in and say I'll, I'll have you know, a craft beer and, and you know a little bit about it and you can get excited about it, it's much more interesting and it says something about you when you order it, the values are stronger because they've been a lot braver in, in their production, braver in their communications. So, Actually, that's a, that's a good example of an industry, a whole industry um, where bigger brands need to be a lot braver. Um, otherwise, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be in trouble. So how important is it then for uh, a product or a brand to say something about you, in your opinion? I, I think that's really important because I think more and more that is why people are, are choosing different brands. There's very few um, industries now where we don't have a lot of choice. And, and especially something like the, the, the beer industry, you know, there's... there's there's so much choice, so many new brands um, that, that actually people are navigating that by, by picking the brands that say something about them. And, and, and craft beer brands is, is a shortcut to, 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 to many things, depending on the brand, but um, an interest in localism, an interest in um, uh, uh, the flavour, um, uh, all of those things that, that instantly, when you order something, it, 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 it signals who you are and what you care about. Um, and not being brave, it, it's very hard to create a brand um, that, that, that says something about you and gives you that. Chris, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks.